Yes, the, the question is Christine from Quebec asking, will gardens be made around the Haiti project? Well, the truth is, wherever an earthship occurs, there will be gardens inside and out because the sewage system is plants. It's biological sewage system. It doesn't work without plants. Plants are the sewage system, both gray and black water. So wherever we plant an earthship, we have planted a jungle, even if it's a place that already has jungle. We're going to be, uh, you know, uh, capitalizing on the climate there to even make more, because the jungle then makes food. So yes, plants occur with every airship they are given. Um, Jerry from New Mexico, from Silver City, asked, do the tires leach out petrochemicals? Uh, they, that's a question that comes up every single time I do any kind of a talk. Do the t Jerry from New Mexico, uh, Silver City, is asking, do the tires leach out petrochemicals? Question, short answer, no. A uh, little bit of explanation. A physicist from the University of Wisconsin responded to that question on his own because it used to get asked all the time. And he ran water over tire chips and air and everything. And he found out that brand new tires have a little leaching. Used tires don't because they've already leached out everything from 30,000 miles on the highway. And in addition to that, earthships are plastered so that the tires are buried from anywhere from an inch and a half to eight inches of mud. So in the, the two things of the tires being buried and the fact that they are old and used, there is no leaching of chemicals, off-gassing, or any such thing. Can you talk a, a bit about what is actually happening in Haiti? Uh, question on what's happening in Haiti. Uh, uh, we usually wait uh, quite a while till after a disaster because they're still gathering up bodies and, and taking care of people that are injured. And they're in chaos, really. So we don't, you know, we're, what we're doing is establishing a place to do something, political invitation, so to speak, so that we have the support of the government, and funding. We're raising funding. It's trickling in, and we got a few groups that are threatening to give us uh, larger amounts. Uh, there's quite a bit of chaos down there. We're in communication with people that are going back and forth, people that have family there. We're synthesizing a, a, a tremendous amount of information to decide where we're going and what we're doing, but all the time we're evolving our design, which at this point is to go down there and see there's tents down there already and people aren't that impressed with tents, although they are somewhat better than some of the cardboard shacks that are happening and there's been a lot of articles written on, you know, wh whether the people there want tents or cardboard shacks or what's the best. N neither one are that good, but we're talking what we have seen from our past experience with this uh, disaster relief stuff is that even us and the people down there, we need instant, almost instant shelter so that we can work. And so, and so they need instant shelter just to get out of the sun and the rain. So tents are the answer in that respect. So what we're doing is going down with a bunch of these dome type tents, gonna, with, and they take 20 minutes to put up. We're going to walk right in them and sleep that night. And then we're going to take materials that are there in the Dominican Republic and all third world countries have steel and rebar, uh, steel, rebar, and concrete. So what we're doing is we're making a birdcage of rebar over the tents and then plastering that so that the tent evolves into a pretty permanent structure and that permanent structure is a, a method of steel and concrete design that is very, very earthquake resistant. It could crack but not cave in like beams and beams and columns uh, and concrete rafters and slabs can just crumble. Uh, I wouldn't want to be under any of that, but being under a thin shell potato chip like dome that's laced with steel, it's not going to cave in. It may crack. So they're safer. So we're, what we're doing, bottom line, is instant shelter in, in a half a day and evolving that instant shelter into permanent shelter with techniques that, that can be taught in a matter of hours so that the people can do it themselves. We are putting it on a base of uh, pounded tires. And of course, we're throwing a few of these out there to put in a, an abbreviated power water and sewage system so that what we have will, what we leave them with after maybe two weeks of work will be housing for about 12 people that has power water and sewage. 
we think we can do this, and not only leave them with that, we think we can leave them with the knowledge of how to replicate it. Yes, we may have to and should do some follow-up to go down and do another one or two and train more people down there to do it, but we think we can plant this virus there in such a way that it will flourish. Uh, what if you shower more than you flush? Um, do you draw from your garden? Like, what do you... Well, we have found out that natural, that, that not natural, but uh, uh, conventional living habits of people, uh, the, the shower and the bathroom sink and the washing machine usually produce about the same amount of water as the flushing takes. So it is a balance. Now you might want to either be educated enough to stay aware of that balance, or if you are in an area where there's a lot of water anyway, you can just turn some of the cistern water into the planter for the flushing. So it, it, there's a lot of tricks on how to operate it, but it's not really a serious thing. We have seen instances where people flush more than they shower and they run out of flushing water, they put some from their cisterns in to the planters. Or they shower more than they flush and they end up with an, a, 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 an excess of gray water, but there's a built-in overflow, it just goes out onto the ground. If, it, if this gray water goes onto the ground, it's already tested and run through oxygenation by plants, so it is perfectly safe to put it on the ground. So there's a little answer to each one of those scenarios. Okay, Ben Rasmussen, uh, do you have any plans for a detailed book or a how-to book on the global model? Coming soon. Uh, we, the question is, uh, do we have any plans for a detailed book on the global model? Yes, it's coming soon. Uh, two of our key people are working on it right now. It's going to be a super detailed book. It's going to be way better than the other detailed booklet. And it's going to go into systems. It's, yeah, we want to show people how to do this themselves. There's no way it, with any kind of funding that our little outfit can build as many airships as need to be built. We need people out there building them and we just need to pave the way for that. And you know, it's like, uh, we're like scouts when they were discovering the West. You know, we're Kit Carson or, or the Lewis and Clark or whatever. We're finding the trail through the West, uh, through the wilderness. And we're hoping to bring covered wagons that use the maps that we made to come through and, and find California. Okay, Valerie uh, from Tennessee asks, is there a way to measure how much water, electricity, uh, you have in your cisterns and your batteries? Yes, they're, they're a little uh, The question is, is there a way to measure the amount of water that's in your cisterns and your batteries? There are electronic devices that will tell you how much water is in your batteries, and there are little graphic clear tubes that will tell you how much water is in your cistern. Now, in terms of our, uh, you know, our regular conventional world prototype global Earthship that people get a $300,000 loan and, and, and buy and, and get built for them, uh, we're trying to go for technology like the Prius. Uh, the, you know, if you get in a Prius, there's a big TV screen there that tells you the condition of your batteries and, and how much gas you're using and shows you all kinds of graphs. And it's really cool technology to show you the ecology of your, of your machine. We, you know, for another 10 grand, we can throw that into the Earthship. We're trying to get that way too. But what I, frankly, I'm seeing uh, it's more serious. There's a more serious need for me to put uh, the time of this company into things like Haiti and making this technology available at a much cheaper price than trying to make it uh, more grand in terms of its high-tech uh, application. Pedro from the Dominican Republic asks, <coughs> when you're in a tropical climate uh, inside of Hurricane Alley, what is the ideal orientation? Of Three sides of the global model airship are buried. Uh, what you would do is super reinforce one side with a steel lattice, uh, which is not that big of a deal, or go into the round model airships that uh, have the greenhouse right in the middle, and I think the, the uh, tube, uh, cooling tube aspect would still work, and you're basically putting your burial out there to the hurricane all the way around the building. So there are methods of uh, dealing with those extremes.